So now I'm going to put the wire in. You might choose a wire that's actually the same colour as the thread that you're using. And the advantage of that is that if your stitches don't cover the wire completely, it's not going to show through as much because you're not going to have a contrast. So as I say, you could get a lovely turquoisey wire, but I've got silver and that's absolutely fine. But what we do need to do is to put our machine on zigzag because I want to zigzag over the wire. The width of my zigzag, that's what I need to control and I want it quite narrow as it's only a thin wire. So you want to be round about, I went too far, so something like 1.8 to 2 is perfectly all right. Now, my needle's in the fabric. I'm just going to lift my presser foot lever up completely because I want to poke my wire underneath. So let me just lift that up. And I'm lying my wire on top of that outside line. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to press it down. Of course, it's not going to stick because I've already stitched there. But uh, I want to be able to zigzag completely over that wire. And therefore, I'm going to move it very, very slowly because, again, it's free machine embroidered. So the machine is going to go from side to side. I've already told it to do a very narrow zigzag, but it's down to me and how fast I move it will determine whether I get a satin stitch or not. And I definitely want a satin stitch for this. So let's put that presser foot lever down and then we're ready to go. I know it's a little bit nerve wracking when you're sewing over wire, but my tip is if you place your wire in the middle of your lovely open toed embroidery foot, you'll be able to see where you're going. So when you do free machine embroidery, there's a choice. You can either have an open toed foot or an enclosed foot. And I find an open toed foot absolutely perfect for this because you can see where you're going. So let's take it gently, gently and stop and turn your work round so that you can sew over your wire. Off we go. So we can go a little bit faster. On this particular machine, I'm sewing on a 1.5, but your machines all vary. So just choose the appropriate one. So just turn it round and just place your wire on top of that line and you're able to zigzag. Because the one thing to remember when you do any zigzagging on soluble fabric, it's the fabric that's keeping it in place as a zigzag. When you wash it, a zigzag stitch would end up being a straight line of stitching. Because I'm sewing over a stitch line of and wire, it will remain zigzag. You're actually stitching over something. So that's worth bearing in mind when you're doing any work on soluble. So now I'm just gonna go around and sew over the whole of this butterfly. So when you get to the inside of the wing and you're going around the corner, I've got my needle in the fabric and if you lift your presser foot up you can just bend your wire around the needle and that gives you that nice sharp point so put your presser foot lever down just remember to do a few stitches in that point just to make sure that the wire gets covered a few stitches and then turn it around so that you can have the wire in the middle of that foot and you know that you're going to accurately cover it without hitting it. So I've gone round the butterfly and I'm nearly where I started from. So you can see the end where I had it poked under the foot when I set off. So what I'm going to do is just cut that and I'll show you how we do a nice neat overlap. So cut that right next to the thread and get rid of that bit of wire. And we need to just make sure we stitch over there. And then when we come to the end, just zigzag right up until you get to that join and, and have it so that the needle is on the outside of the butterfly. Bend the wire so that it's going to sit on top of the first wire. What we need to do is just lower that presser foot, do a few stitches on that corner, okay, which is absolutely fine. And then just to make sure that we are allowing enough room to enclose both bits of wire, 
just need to increase my stitch width. And I'm just going to zigzag over both wires just for a little bit uh, and then I'm going to cut the surplus off. Don't cut the surplus off yet. If you do that, you'll end up with a pokey bit of wire and it'll be really hard to control. But by keeping it long at this moment, it's easy to control. If we just go over both bits of wire, and then what we can do is stop. And you will see that there's a little bit of wire poking out. So what I tend to do is just push that down but we need to make sure that that's safely enclosed in some stitching. So I've straightened it with my scissors. I'm going to lower my presser foot and just make sure I enclose that wire. So let's just do that. Do a few stitches backwards and forwards and then we know it's enclosed. And that is all the zigzagging done. So I've put my machine back to straight stitch and I'm going to now fill in the wings. And I'm going to do that by interlinking all my stitches so that it's nice and lacy, but it all is stitched. And I'm going to sew over the edges of my fabric as well and, and make sure that the fabric pieces and the rest of the stitches are all joined. Both wings are all nicely stitched and what I'm going to do is pop in some metallic thread so I can do some decoration on those wings. So I've popped a Madeira metallic thread in there and it's a lovely variegated metallic thread which I'm hoping will give us some lovely interest on the butterfly wings. And we're going to do some curls and I'm going to show you how to do that without having to draw onto the wings. I find that if I start here and do a curl over to this side go back over myself so I get back to where I started from. I'm then able to do a corresponding curl on the opposite wing. And if I do one curl on one side and then it's matching curl on the other side, I find it easier to visually do that. If I did all the curls on one side of the butterfly and then attempted to do all the curls on the other one, I find visually that I struggle to do that. So we're going to use the edge of the butterfly as a guide. We're going to also use the little bits of fabric as a guide as to where you're going to stitch this design. And then we're ready to set off and I'm going to do a curl over here. We're still on straight stitch and I'm just using the edge of the wing as a guide, keeping a few millimetres away from the edge. And when we get near to the tip, I'm going to do a curl and I'm going to bring that round and I'm going to do a curl like that. I'm going to stop and go back over myself. Now the easiest way to go back over a curl that you've already done is if you turn your work round, you will be able to see how to stitch that. Subtle colour change, but we've got all those lovely colours coming through. And I think this thread just is perfect for doing decoration on butterflies. So I'm now going to attempt to do a corresponding curl on the other wing. So we've got two corresponding curls now and I'm going to do a nice big fat curl right in the middle of that net because I think that's going to really show it off.
now we're going to do the bottom wings. And so we've got these two little circles. So I think we need to sort of incorporate that in the in the design. So I'm going to I'm going to head off. I'm going to come through the middle of this stitching, and I'm going to do my curl round there. So let's see how that looks. And there we have it. So let's take it out of the machine, cut the threads, and we'll cut the soluble fabric away. So there we are, that's all done. So we're ready now to cut this away from the soluble fabric and wash it. And that's when the magic happens. So easiest thing to do, no need to unscrew that, just pop the inner hoop out. That's the easiest way to do that. And there we have the soluble fabric. So again, because this is quite strong you need to actually cut your design away and just cut a little bit more of that off actually I can access that a bit more easily and we're ready now for dunking and with this one we need it to be hot water it washes out more easily so again what I would do is just dunk that and lift it out and you'll see that it starts to dissolve see that it's dissolving and disappearing so I'm just going to pull that off I'm not going to dunk again it's very tempting to over dunk and what that means is that you'll wash too much of that soluble away and we want to keep the some of the residue in it so that it gives it that stiffness we've got the wire in there but we just want that bit of body as well so I'm just cut, making sure that that's disappearing which it is which is lovely just peel that away and you'll feel it under your fingers a little bit gloopy and so especially where we've got those net wings we really need to wash that away because can you see it's still there so you can by scratching but we don't want to damage that lovely net so a little another dunk and a bit of a rub on the wings should help make that disappear so you're really in control when you work with soluble fabrics, I'm not a great fan of just throwing it in there and walking off. You need to monitor how much is, is coming out. So again, because it's quite delicate, we don't want to rub it too much. We want to squeeze the surplus out because the beauty of this is that we're going to have a lovely lacy and we'll be able to see that lovely net. And we don't want the holes of the net full of soluble and then when you've done that, the best thing to do is to get a bit of polystyrene or, or you can pin it to a cardboard box. But what I like to do is just put a couple of pins at the top and leave it like that to drip dry. If you're in a hurry, I would blow dry it with a hairdryer and I would actually put another couple of pins in there so that when you blow it with a hairdryer it doesn't come off. But I wouldn't pin it tight to the polystyrene because you want to enable it to drip dry and if as I say if you are in a hurry don't be tempted to iron out um, the, the piece in between two bits of baking parchment or a towel or something because you've got that residue in there and that will actually make it stick to whatever it is that you're using to iron so drip dry is, is my preferred method and it's amazing how quickly that dries if you have that over a radiator or on a sunny windowsill or in our case, we're trotting off for lunch. <laughs>